stuff mm -hmm. about women and their breasts. That's one of the things that they look at first. They talk about legs and they talk <laughs> about eyes True. and so forth and so on. That's the last thing they see. If they see a woman who, especially if she's attractively put together and dressed and doesn't mind showing her cleavage, it's, uh, that's the first thing that they respond to. Exactly. One thing I did notice that uh, in the U.S., from what I can see, they really don't like large breasts. And I've been large size all my life, top to bottom. And I've noticed that a lot of men have stayed away from me because I'm full top to bottom. Well, you ought to come over where I live, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had to more beat them away with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, is no. a wonderful place for me to say. Good evening. <laughs> I'm Deborah Smith. Uh. Welcome to our voices. Tonight you'll meet three beautiful, outspoken women, <laughs> African-American women, who tonight hopefully will shatter the myth about what is sexy or sensuous, what is attractive, what beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Come meet our beautiful women. They are Sandy Summers. Sandy is the head uh, and a designer and a consultant for fashion for Su Sandy Summers Head, right? Yes, Thank Sandy you. Summers Head is my complete name. And um, I'm a writer, a former fashion editor, and I design clothes. And I specialize in women who have difficulty finding clothes for full for their full figure body. Regina Young. Regina Young is a professional model. Regina, do you model clothes for the full figured woman? I sure do. I model for Plus Models in New York. And I've been modeling for them for eight years. Basically, I have modeled for Alfred Angelo, which is a bridal line, mm -hmm. as well as any aspect of large size lifestyle, which is more important than just the fashion. Because the lifestyle of a large size woman you have to cater to just like you do for the thin women. You cater to their lifestyle. Oh, we're going to have a lot to talk about. <laughs> and I think this lady needs no introduction, but because I did it the proper way with the other ladies, I will do it with her. <laughs> she is Vesta Weir, a singer, but better known to all of us as Simply. Miss Vesta, y'all. <laughs> 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 all right, now to the important discussion. We were talking about the way men view, but I think women are just as um, questioning and insensitive to women who are full-figured, don't you? Very insensitive to full-figured women. Unfortunately, they, it depends wh what situation you're in, but basically, if you look seductive, uh, the cat calls are there, that's for sure, but I don't feel like... But how like do women treat you? Women? Hmm. Well... <laughs> How do women treat other women? Well, I don't have any problem when being an outspoken, inter outspoken entertainer, one who is uh, cleavage bound most of the time. Cleavage bound. Cleavage bound. Let me write that down. Cleavage, <laughs> bound. <laughs> cleavage bound. Okay, I don't have any problem, and I have lots of women, full-figured women, larger size women, come up and say, "I am so happy that you will put on that bustier, Miss Thing. I am so happy that you wear those tights and those heels and those pumps." I am so happy you're going out there and you look like you're so comfortable. I am comfortable with my size and with myself. Okay, let's talk about being comfortable. But right here, I'd also like to applaud Essence Magazine for July because what they did was mm -hmm. they featured fashions for the full-figured women that were sensuous and attractive. Okay. Finally, well, we're finally, the majority, right. and I wonder who wrote that article. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy wrote that article, and the and the clothes were fabulous. Let's talk about images. Most of us, first of all, full figured. I, see, I look at you, and I, I don't think fat. I look at all you women. I don't think fat. Full figure is another way of saying she's fat, exactly. isn't it? No, well, I, no think I don't think so. Full. I think full means that you are rounded. You're voluptuous. That you're not anorexic. You're not, you're not angular. You have curves, and you a lot of them have them in the right places. Yeah. And we're, we're talking about uh, a, a positive description of a woman's size as opposed to... The negative images. The negative well, images. Well, when I hear the word fat, fat is obese in my brain. Mm -hmm. Full is voluptuous, and that's how I see myself. Okay. How do you see yourself? Have you always seen yourself as voluptuous? I wasn't always voluptuous. I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to love this show. I'm going to 
love this show. <laughs> Were you thin then became full yeah, figure? I was, I was very slim and Welcome athletic. Welcome to the club. I had an athletic body. I was a track star. I was, you know, I had a real, I had that kind of booty. That I didn't have hips that went out, they went out from the back. The side view was the hip view, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had slim hips. You know, I didn't have a mm -hmm. hourglass bobby, it was a straight, but from the back it was hurting, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this question, because I was a thin woman who then became full figure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I find that I didn't change, Beverly didn't change, but people in their reactions oh, sure, toward me sure, changed. True. Family members and their reactions towards oh, you changed. Yeah. And then I found that I did start to change mm -hmm. a little. Now let me see if any of these strike. And I want you women to share with us, because we have a chance to speak out and talk about something. The first thing I started to do was cover up. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want anyone to notice that mm -hmm. I had turned mm -hmm. full figure. Mm -hmm. Did you do that? No, I was born a full-figured child, okay? Um, my sisters are thinner than I am, and I was always taller, rounder, and as I became uh, a teenager, I developed early and clean uh, into the present moment. I've always, I, I think when I first started paying attention to my size, I was always a 14. I was always full busted. I was always broad shouldered. And um, I knew that I was different and I was having a very difficult time finding clothes in the stores. But uh, God gave me some good hands. And so you uh, learned how to sew. I learned exactly. how to sew. I designed clothes because I will tell early. You, it, it's amazing how the designers feel and what women of the world oh. say. It's like two different things. Sure. The first size is to go in a store, 12, 14, mm -hmm. and 16. Well, we're the majority. That's the point. When you go to the mall, we are the majority in the mall. Yeah. They're not anorexic uh, model-like girls, the, the Vogue model-like girls running through the mall. There are the 12, 14, 16, 18 women running around fighting <laughs> for that last 14 top that's got mm -hmm. the sequin on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I liked about Essence, because that story was the reality of the size, the range was the reality of the market. Mm -hmm. And I was glad that they did decide to do the range, because, you know, when they do go to the store, when you go home, when you go visit your friends, they're not all thin. They're all healthy. healthy. Right. healthy yeah, so that was a wonderful healthy. opportunity to present another point of view another point of view that happens to um, be the real world as we see like Vesta's talking about in the malls. Mm -hmm. Well, well let me talk to you two women right now about mm -hmm. the real world if I can interrupt you for sure. just a moment because I'm listening to you and my mind, it, mind is racing. So what surprises me about the fashion industry and all of you join in is that most of the people who do the choosing of models and I'm thinking about Eileen Ford Agency and the like, they're heavy set women. Most of the women who prepare the clothes, the full-figured <laughs> women, for the thin models. Most of the male designers of clothes, Bill Blass and the like, look at the size of them. What does that say about what we are telling women in America? Is it confusing? Do they it's want us to be schizophrenic or what? Conflicting messages, Very for confusing. sure. Well, obviously, they don't like how they look. Exactly. If they spend all their time designing clothes for this very svelte, very pulled, very taunt look, and they sitting up eating up four or five plates worth of food, <laughs> obviously. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know why they don't do a line for, for what they are afraid of, you know? I mean, because if you notice, those designers are very rarely seen, if at all. I mean, they try to stay behind the scenes, you know what I mean, until they just get so famous that you have to catch a glimpse of them. Of them. And then you notice that they run around with their ponytail and their suit is full. Exactly. All right, well, suit is full. the oh, second yeah. point that I want, since we're talking about fashion, is that we're wearing almost identical colors. <laughs> we're wearing the plain look. Uh, we're wearing the safe look. You two have gone crazy. <laughs> 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 you are wearing polka dots. No. I'm getting to you. <laughs> You're wearing yeah. polka dots. Now, the funny thing about it is when you used to go shopping in a full-figured store, they would bring you these horrible-looking flower dresses. Mm -hmm. But then they would say to you, you cannot wear polka mm -hmm. dots. You should True. not wear polka dots because it makes your breasts look larger. But you look marvelous. But see, Vesta hit a point. We're talking about self-esteem, knowing who you are, feeling good about your your size, feeling good about you from the inside. Exactly. That's where it all starts. 
Yeah. I'm not going to look any smaller in black, okay? I'm not going to look any smaller in white. I am who I am. I so have you wear things. all colors? I wear everything. Red, I my favorite stretch color. legs. I wear sure. the lace. You know, if I could, mm -hmm. I'm just now getting to the bustier to find it, <laughs> find it to fit. Bess has well, been a fan of mine. Right? I know you will. I'm going <laughs> to ask you. But no, I wear it all because, see, I'm still frightened to wear a lot of the things because, first well, of all, you're an entertainer. Mm -hmm. And so doesn't that make it, I mean, I don't want to be confused no, with my 23, 22-year-old daughter. sized female entertainers that I've seen that they'd be covered up, buttoned mm -hmm. up. They'd look exactly. like if they could find a hood to put on, they would. <laughs> but you do reveal cleavage. Now, oh, sure. I think I'm cute. It, <laughs> and so do we. But wait a minute. So do we. So do we. Thank we you. think you are, too. Not only do we think you're cute, but we think you are fashionably attired. Thank but, you. But... For you, who are the experts in fashion, she's wearing low cleavage. All of the pictures that I have seen of the 17th, 16th, 15th, okay, 18th on, century honey. all reveal a cleavage. Mm -hmm. Why then did the fashion industry try to cover it up? Well, because most, if you notice, most of the designers are gay. Not that that has anything. I'm not saying that's derogatory, in a derogatory fashion. But if a man is into men, he's going to want to put clothes on a woman that is, is as close to an, 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 an androgynous body as possible. So you feel That's that revealing certain things is feminine? Yes. Oh, yeah. I okay. think, well, see, I'm Rubenesque, if you want to go on back to the 18th and 17th century. Mm -hmm. We are Rubenesque. Yes, yes, yes. And that yes, was, yes. you know, if you go up in, in Italy and everywhere, and all them cathedrals, sure. where everybody's laid all out with all that stomach and behind mm -hmm. and thighs and stuff. See, that's us. You but go. did you feel, do you mm -hmm. ever feel that you have to compete with the thinner women? Now, you talk about your sisters being smaller than you are you no, see I, it's hard for me to no, think of no, you as no. being a full-figured woman no my full mo figure, my I'm sister was a model and, mm -hmm. and just recently stopped so quite often we'd be in a photography sitting where she would be in front of the camera i'd be behind the camera and people would ask me all the time aren't you jealous of your sister no i'm not jealous of my sister she's no. one of my best friends she is who she is I am who I am and that's and what we're trying to do here is is convince other women that it's okay for them to be who they are and style is not limited by size if I you agree. feel good about and yourself. And we don't all have to look exactly, exactly alike. alike. If it wasn't for me being my size, it was my voluptuous self, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to tell me from the other singers that are similar in complexion and hairstyle and makeup. If it wasn't for the bigger women, the thin women wouldn't even know they were thin. Okay. I got that. Did you get that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what about, Please. I'm going to throw out all the things that I hear women who are like us. I like Rubenesque because that's what we are. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in various sizes and in various shades. That's exactly what we are. First, thin women say, full women say, yeah, but when I go out with my thin friends, men don't talk to me. No, not at all. <laughs> I'd be, to be totally surprised, they probably would come to me first oh, yeah. before they'd go to a thin woman. Knock a thin because woman down. the style that you'd be wearing is more seductive on finer curves than it is on a straight board. So I don't have that problem. <laughs> I have never had that problem. When <laughs> no, I was not a problem. Mm -mm. Thin or <laughs> knock Rubenesque. a thin woman down. I'm talking about run her down, have track marks on her head. <laughs> all right, fashion no no. <laughs> Because you are full of figure, you should, and I'm, I've been guilty of this, you should wear scarves because it takes away the no. attention away from your fullness. Never wore a scarf in my life. I well, think you should be more adventurous. I do too. I think I you should be more adventurous because uh, if you keep to the norm, then you'll just be the norm. To try and experiment to find what looks good on your body, then it doesn't matter how the fashion changes. The bottom line is you still have your own style and your own identity. Don't worry for realize, the market. I didn't realize I was a so-called quote-unquote bigger girl until somebody else told me. So I didn't really realize that. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. I didn't think of myself as a as bigger a, or mm -hmm. any different than mm -hmm. anybody. I had a boyfriend. I had a husband. I had a. I, I had everything. Everybody. I not didn't at the same mama. time. We <laughs> want to make that <laughs> perfectly clear. <laughs> not <laughs> at the same <laughs> time. <laughs> Why don't we take a Thank break you so while much. I go through with this flash, <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs>